Okay, welcome back. Hour number three. It's uh, Monday night time for our Fukushima update for you, our report, which continues to get worse and worse, just as exactly as we forecast it would four-plus years ago. With us, Yochi Shimatsu. Uh, he is uh, one of the great people on the planet, period, has done more uh, in terms of personal sacrifice to go in and do the research than anyone I know. He's been to Fukushima at least a dozen times and has paid uh, a very strong and uh, very serious personal physiological price for that. But what he has brought to this program and into your minds is priceless. And in a few minutes, when you look in guests at rents, look under uh, Yoichi's name and you'll find a periodic table of elements. And we're going to look at that as we talk about what's going on. And what's going on... Uh, Oh, first of all, Brad, at the bottom of the hour, we'll just go through the bottom of the hour. I don't want to stop. Really too much going on here. Uh, let me read the Fukushima update headlines for all of you. And again, I ask you, I know you don't have time to read all the stories. I put up 115 stories already today. They're all carefully selected. They're not just thrown up there. But the latest Fukushima headlines, radiation, instant death, 9.7 sieverts in Fukushima reactor number one. That's the robot in there. And there's a second story. Fukushima robot, which broke down, as I think many of you who care about this know, uh, leaves TEPCO in the dark. Uh, the dead robot reported 10 sieverts an hour, not 9.7, but 10 sieverts an hour inside the containment of reactor one. That's astonishing. Top nuclear scientist in America says now, only 30 billionths of a gram of iodine-131 is fatal. Now, I know I had that and then some. Uh, I've been doing a lot to try, like Yochi does, to cleanse that stuff out of my body, and there are things you can do. One of them, of course, if you look at the home page at Rents, look for my name and click on that. You'll see there's three blue banners with my name in white, It'll tell you exactly what to take. One of the greatest things on the planet, Chernobyl-proven, bio-aged for super algaes, which will help you beat this radiation exposure and bioaccumulative radiation back. This top nuclear scientist, again, 30 billionths of a gram of iodine-131 is fatal. Japan, dolphin die-off. This is really another sad story, at least 150 uh, on the beach, all dead, within 50 miles of uh, Fukushima Daiichi. Of course, it couldn't possibly be radiation. Uh, they don't talk. They never say the R word. Fukushima containment robot uh, is going to be left inside. They can't get it back out. Why bring it out? thing is red hot. Fukushima unit number one robot said, still transmitting some data. How much? We don't know. What? We don't know. The media continues to push the idea that Fukushima radiation is just fine. It's no problem. Fukushima robot fried, in case you didn't know, three hours after entering the containment area of Reactor 1. And with that, let's say hello to uh, Yochi. Where are you tonight? Somewhere in Thailand, I hope. Are you there, Yochi? Ah, we don't hear him. Let's see what my email says. Nothing there yet. So maybe we do have him. We're trying to get him. These Thailand cell phones, for some reason, are either very easy to interrupt and intercept, or it's not a very good system down there. Let's see. I'm going to try this again, see if I can find out. Let me know what's happening, Brett, will you? All right. Let me go back up. We're going to put this periodic table up anyhow, whether we get a hold of Yochi on, on the phone or not. Uh, but this, this 10 sieverts an hour inside reactor one, just, uh, overwhelming amounts of radiation. They'll never be able to go in there. The whole thing is basically congealed into a, a mass of death. And I think we've got, uh, somebody online right now. Yoshi, are you there? Yeah. 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 Well, my phone mysteriously just buzzed out. I don't know if it's just static electricity or what. It's very weird, but. Yeah, anyway, we always do that. Um, the dead yeah, rope, uh, I was just going over... Very did, bad news, huh? Yeah, did you get yeah. some of the headlines? I, I was reading through the headlines. And the, yeah, uh, I guess the, uh, from the 
melon head whales to this yeah one, but, the well they call them dolphins but they're they're a type of whale Dolphin. 150 now they're yeah, whales no. melon heads uh, anyway yeah. they're dead uh, no one says radiation they're all within 50 miles of uh, Fukushima Daiichi yeah. uh, the dead robot it only lasted three hours in the containment uh, yeah. was reporting 10 sievert 9.7 to 10 sieverts an hour inside that reactor they're never going to be able to get anywhere near that nah nah you'd be uh, a worker would be lucky to live 20 minutes in that environment yeah you know, I mean you'd be fatally ill in five minutes and in 20 minutes completely dead so there's no even with a safety suit you have no chance in that environment so and so, and I think some of the science that's coming out of all this stuff is very interesting what it's telling us about what's happening in the images inside the reactor and what's happening inside the melon had a dolphin. Okay, okay this, these are two very important the subjects. Is coming yeah. through is not coming from the labs, is not coming from the engineers or scientists, but just from the images and the little bit of data, some autopsies were done on the uh, melon headed dolphin. Um, okay, this is very, hold, hold, Yochi, Yochi, hold on. Yeah. P- yeah. Folks, I'm yeah. t- let me talk to the audience. This is extremely yeah. important news you're about to hear. Please Focus on it. Okay, go ahead, Yoshi. Tell us what you know from your experience yeah, the and what they're telling us. The veterinarians who uh, did the autopsy found no blood inside the lungs. You know, the lungs were completely white. And they also noticed that the internal organs, stomach, uh, the intestines, liver area, everything was totally clean. Um, and this is exactly uh, in the same state that I found that mother sea lion right in front of San Onofre nuclear plant who died from wastewater that came out of San Onofre, uh, and a mix of everything else, you know, off, off the California coast. Well, uh, you did, uh, you did your own, uh, necropsy on the, on the, uh, on the dead yeah, yeah, sea lion. Yeah, uh, the, the, it was, uh, torn open by a shark. I checked inside, opened, uh, opened up inside, did radiation reading, stomach, Cleanest, uh, you know, animal I've ever smelled. Yeah, I've gone hunt- on hunting parties and all that with big ones. Well, you know, the sure. intestine areas are usually very smelly. But we're talking about nothing inside. Completely, uh, smells like seawater, okay? So basically, it indicates the animals had not been eating for weeks, okay? Everything, nothing inside the gut, nothing inside the stomach, nothing inside the rectum area. Completely cleaned out, then washed out with sea water probably for weeks. So, uh, no stench at all, no rot or decay. Uh, that means it was dying from an internal problem. Uh, lung, uh, lungs, the uh, pure white tissue of the lungs, you know, the, uh, would indicate very, very weak blood circulation. There's no blood circulation. And that would mean a catastrophic heart condition, just like this mother sea lion has found. Uh, heart area. Lots of radiation in the heart area, okay? Uh, nothing in the gut. So, therefore, the cesium had built up around the uh, heart. The whole body function had slowed down. It's, uh, you know, eye, uh, thin coordination was down, so it couldn't, it couldn't feed, couldn't eat, hadn't eaten. And uh, finally, the heart just basically couldn't get blood to the vital organ, and there was a collapse of the animals, and I think that's why they had the beach. These animals could not swim any further. They would drown at sea, you know. They have to have the strength to be able to come up to the surface of the water to get a breath of air. They lack that, so they had to come inshore to the beach just to breathe, okay, and that's where they were stranded. So pushing them back out to the beach didn't help. It just meant that they all drowned. I understand. Okay, all right, on the other side of the coin, uh, all the things you've mentioned, what was the availability of food had they had the energy to go chasing after it? That's the other story. Their food, the food chain well, is anything, shattered. Is shattered. Anything out there would be, let's say, a fish from the southern waters from the Kuroshio uh, current. Uh, there are fish that come up uh, from that current, but they would be tend to be stronger, fast movers, easily would evade a weakened sea mammal. So, therefore, there are a few fish out there which are not entirely radioactive from different currents, but uh, essentially, it's been cleaned out there. The traditional feeding grounds, what they're used to eating, mm-hmm. has all been cleaned out. Mm-hmm. So, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, they just and they there was no way they had the strength to catch up. And it's not just a lack of food; it's the radioactive food that they had ingested, radioactive fish. That's basically the cesium uh, stopped the heart, and that was it. You know, does that does uh, heart to point. does a bioaccumulative radiation? Uh, 
somehow you talked about no decay, no stench, no yeah. uh, decay. Yeah. Does it do yeah. something to kill off the, the bacteria that would otherwise begin to uh, decompose the corpse? Radiation? I, I believe so. It's not a, yeah, right. The internal organs of a mammal that hasn't fed is just not a great environment. And it's for, been, and the radiation, know, the radiation inside, really yeah. Sort of mummifies, yeah, mummifies the animal. They, that's the word. It just kills everything. Yeah, at the moment. And then you, you gotta understand, they're exposed to a lot of iodine in the water too, out of the plant. So, you know, the, uh, you know, iodine itself is a bacterial killer, okay? And you have yeah. radioactive iodine, imagine. That is just wiping out, uh, any kind of algae bacteria in the water. So these animals are basically perfectly preserved, but without blood, you know? And the blood loss is a real, uh, interesting thing. Probably the marrow, you know, was attacked somehow. I mean, that was a mystery. How come the animals don't bleed? You know, what happened to the blood? And that's one of the mysteries of this whole, whole, uh, you know, situation. Uh, did, you know, they excrete their, you know, I mean, did they actually digest their blood? Did their own bodies in the last desperate attempt to keep going actually yeah. digest its own blood? You know, did the organs basically have to process the blood to keep surviving? And I assume that's what happened to the blood because there's, you know, no external bleeding. You don't see any pools of blood in them. There's right. only blood in the heart, but not very much. The heart is very dark, of course, because it is, the muscle tissue is dying. So right. it's not like right. a red tissue. It's more like brown tissue because of the death of the muscle. So these are catastrophic events, very much warning. These are mammals that are equivalent to human beings in terms of they're uh, a little uh, larger than human absolutely. beings. Absolutely. You know, their diet is not that much different than ours. Their metabolism... It's almost a perfect overlay of a life form. Exactly. Uh, it's just that's accelerated at sea, but, you know, we breathe in that water, we drink that water, we take showers, basically, you know, it's not seawater, but all the water does come from the Pacific and you know, recirculates around. So that is a premonition of what... I don't think it's going to happen. What's already happening? They're already it's happening. Yes, right in Japan, a lot no, no. of elders, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, yeah. I think people are. I think people are really are feeling the effects. The lethargy has set in to the Japanese public. I think behavior issues come out when you don't have a strong heart. You know, yeah. I mean, you, yeah. When yeah, if you gradually weaken, it's going to change your behavior. You just can't do the things. You know. That, let me uh, tell you. Let, let me ask you a question, and then I'll I'll uh, chime in here. But first, let me uh, welcome Dana Dernford, uh, our special guest. Yeah. Uh, hi, Dana. Welcome back to the program up there in BC. How are you, Dana? Are you there? Okay, he's he's online. He's so I think far. he yeah, can hear so, us. He's been so far out of range. Uh, he must be really far up, and we yeah. had to applaud him. For well, we had him on. I I got a note from Brett that he was. Sorry, yeah, there he is. Right. I mean, he's ten years. Oh, there he is. Good, excellent. Hi, Yoshi. Hey there. Good to hear you. Uh, missed you. You too. Yeah. You you're too much way out there, I assume. You must be way up there. I'm at the very tip of Canada. Yeah. I'm about 30 miles from uh, right now. And we're, we're wow. actually regulating temperatures here by the warm oceans from Japan. Uh, Japan's, mm. uh, if you go to Mass, it's where, uh, Wikipedia page, it says the temperature is regulated by the warm ocean currents from Japan year long, year round. And so if you're going to find it up yeah. there, this is where the fastest spot to go. It's right in the center of it all. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, did you guys have... Go ahead, Jeff. I'm sorry. No, Dana, go. Go. Did you guys uh, know that Canada has a new standard in their drinking water? Um, oh, they, ra water? they raised the acceptable uh, safe level again, did they? Guidelines for Canadian drinking water qualities. And so what they done was, yeah, they changed... Uh, maximum acceptable concentration for natural and artificial radionuclides. And the artificial radionuclides, uh, tritium, is now at 7 million becquerels a cubic meter. Mm. Unbelievable. 7 million a cubic meter? Uh, a cubic meter, 7,000 becquerels a liter, oh. 7,000 liters a cubic meter. And so this the uh, mittens, they just poked it up on their site. They got strontium-90 at 5 becquerels a liter. That's 5,000 becquerels. Uh, that's 5,000 atoms in a cubic meter of water when you take a bath or your hot tub. Iodine-131, because there's an ongoing constant releases, is six becquerels. And, of course, you don't include all the other uh, iodine daughters, like the 132, 133, and the 129 with a 50 million a year half. Like, there's 31 times more of that. And cesium-137 now at 10,000 becquerels a cubic meter. So when you're getting a shower or a bathtub, folks... Uh, 
suck up those atoms, and they don't care about you. Don't tell the slaves. Just put it up on the site and allow media to refer well, to it. And, I, and there's one word I can guarantee you does not appear anywhere in that report or any of those new levels of safe exposure, and that is bioaccumulation. This, uh, no, sir. The, uh, the other scientist, I don't know if you're listening in the beginning, but I've got this story up as well. Yes. Uh, Yoshi, the uh, periodic chart is up under your name, so when we get to that, it's ready to go. Yeah, uh, yeah no, no hurry. I'm, I'm interested in what's happening up there. The, the, word, the very word being used I got artificial radionucleotide, that is like an admission. It's coming That's an emission, out of the sir. nuclear plant, yeah. massive amount. Now, that is an admission, you know, that this stuff doesn't occur in nature. It wouldn't even probably, most of those compounds that come out of a normal nuclear plant wouldn't be called specifically artificial radionucleotides. But we're talking about absolutely new uh, radioactive elements streaming across in the water. And they're not telling us what those elements are, you know, those artificial no, what they're saying, though, and what we are being able to fortunately understand and see in black and white, they put the robot into the containment in uh, Reactor 1. The robot died three hours later, but not before. Yeah. <laughs> it reported 10 sieverts an hour in there. And that no one's going to be able to get near that. It doesn't even look like a containment chamber anymore. There's no evidence of fuel rods. It's, it's just a mess. And I'm, I'm yeah, telling yeah, that, you, that folks. 10, that 10 millisieverts, and why the Canadian government is talking about artificial radionucleotides is because there are more than a dozen artificial nucleotides that are created inside a, uh, a reactor that are far more radioactive than even plutonium, okay? Right. More than plutonium, okay? There's more than a dozen of them, about 20 of them. And so this stuff is super dangerous. These are super heavy metals coming out of there more dangerous than plutonium, and if the Canadian government is mentioning artificial radionuclides, they have an inkling. This stuff is super deadly. You know, we're we're past the point of plutonium at this point, and that ten uh, that ten sieverts per hour is another indication that it's not corium we're talking about anymore. The uh, the entire pressure vessel, the reactor itself has now been transformed into a super heavy metal emitter of radiation, you know, that makes plutonium look like uh, Kool-Aid, you know? So, yes. so that's the bad news. And I think, you know, we're seeing that uh, symmetry between the Canadian government's uh, water safety report and then what uh, that robot is looking at. Okay, okay I mentioned earlier uh, this top scientist, and I, we've got, i got to get this link fixed. But it's very important that you understand that uh, one of the top scientists in the world, in fact, supposedly the number one nuclear scientist in America, is now saying that a very, very small amount of iodine-131, 30 billionths of a gram, is lethal. Now, this is, yeah, it's all, it's got a half-life of 30 days or something like that. Not the point. The point is it's con constantly being released into the ocean, and it can get across the ocean in le far less than 30 days, comes across in the air far less than 30 days. So iodine-131 is still very much a problem. That's what I believe I was exposed to for about 10 days. It, uh, it, it hit me. And i got to tell you, I have never, I have a lot of energy. I like a lot of stamina, but I don't have what I did uh, before that happened. I just don't. I don't know. Yochi, is is your stamina down? It has to be. Oh, yeah. I've been to Fukushima enough where, you know, it's not the yeah. same sort of robust person once was. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, I just, I, and I hate, to, I hate to say it. I, it's not an ego thing, but, yeah. uh, and, and, uh, Dana's up there in it. Uh, he's got physical challenges yeah. from a diving accident to begin with. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I, you know, I still work 10, 12, 14 hours a day. But I don't have the the yeah. physical st inner core strength I had, yeah. and yeah. it's just yeah, not yeah. there. It wears, yeah, it takes a toll. Just look at what happened to those uh, dolphins. You know, it's happening to people on both sides, of, all around the Pacific, right? Well, now. Well, I thank God I'm able. Where Dana is is also, you know, the interesting yeah. thing. He's so close to the ocean shore. It's you know, the, when the water is just coming, not very far, the days less than a day's distance, uh, the water current. Uh, it's a good measure of what's happening in that 50th state of Alaska, 49th state of Alaska, right. that 
situation for him, I suppose. But you know, I I don't know. Uh, Dana, what have you what have you seen up there that close that far? He may be off. Uh, we're getting a yeah, beep no, beep. Oh, there are you there, Dana? I'm here. Okay, yeah, I got you. I was on mute that time, and I was hearing the beep beep. Yeah. And so you guys were getting a beep beep too. Yeah. Yes. But okay. but you're there. Go ahead. There was nothing... Did you get hit? Did you get uh, Yochi's question? No, I didn't. Okay, what Yochi. Last part? You rephrase your question. Yeah, you're so close. You're so close to Alaska. I, the conditions are basically essentially the same. I'm just wondering what you're finding up there uh, in your far northern. Extension there. What are you? What are you right. coming up with? What do you think? It's it's all gone, and we're down to around twenty twenty two uh, species of algae out of the six hundred, and then just one species of starfish showing up. There was a couple of species, one or two of them, and scoured uh, right at the very tip there, the best you could. It really, you know, it's it's coming up to spring and everything. But uh, the total of the Charlotte's, it's all gone. And, there, it, you know, there is some here because it's off the coastline. And so there's a lot more water circulating around it, I guess, and moving the radiation back and forth. Whereas on the mainland, it's running off the mountains and coming down to the coastline. And so it's really, you know, it's, it's down to one one tenth of a hundredth of a percent of what it should be there. And so it's definitely gone. There's no, but I mean, I'm still stunned by 7 million beckles in a cubic meter of water of tritium since yesterday, and it's going to take me a couple of days. Hopefully, I can get over this, but that is a huge blow. That's a 12-year half-life, and so like Yoshi was saying earlier, that if we got all these other elements, if we find one, we're going to find most of the other ones, and if we find a lot of some of them, then we're going to find a whole lot of all of them. Keep in mind, folks, that uh, Dana and and Yochi and I are not talking about people who live on on the West Coast directly. We're talking about the people who live in North America, all over the country, all over Canada. It moves, it migrates through the air, jet stream, lower lower altitude wind currents. Uh, it, it, there's just nowhere to go. And so they, when they put a 7,000 beckles a liter, a liter. I can't believe a this. I, I mean, this a is liter. just unbelievable. That, and, and if you look it up, of course, uh, look up uh, guidelines for Canadian drinking water quality, guideline technical document, radiological perimeters. Mm-hmm. And that's at the, their government official website. When you scroll down, the first one you're going to hit at the bottom of the index, just a little bit down the page, is the artificial radio nuclei on one side, and the natural ones on the other side. Now, the natural ones are only at 0.5 beckles a liter, like radium and lead. And, you know, they're nothing in comparison of the artificial one. The artificial one just pummels the natural ones that they... Okay, give us, a, give, us a, a, com- give us a quick comparison again. The natural one, 0.25, did you say? 0.50? Uh, nat- 0.5 for radium-226. Okay. Uh, tritium, uh, 7,000 beckles a liter. They want everybody so to die. Five. This is genocide. This is a genocide, sir. Thank you. And strontium-90 is uh, five beckles a liter. That might not sound like a lot to a lot of people, but that's uh, five atoms. Now, when you look at a bathtub or you look at drinking water every day or look at it in the cubic meter, which is what most of them do look at this at, that's 5,000 beckles. Atoms, radioactive long-lived atoms, but see, they say there's 10,000 beckles uh, in a cubic meter of cesium 137 which means there's actually 100 times more strontium-90, because that's how that works at the reactors, and we have the studies that prove that. And when you, once again, when you see iodine-131, they admit to that. They're not alluding to it. They actually got it up there now as a drinking water standard. They never bothered explaining it to anybody. They never bothered talking about it. They never told anybody when they made that change, and that was in the last three or four or five weeks. And because I've been on the site many times. And so this just showed up in the last couple of days, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm truly stunned, and I'm heartbroken. And I understand the significance of it many, just too many ways. And I had been very angry for the last 24 hours about this and consumed by the fact that they, we've never had a debate about this. And we have all kinds of academics and institutions, and we can go to work on solving some of the major issues for the water filtration systems for the community, for the irrigations, for the farms, to try to kind of mitigate some of it. But to, to unmitigate it and allow us just to go ahead and consume this in two or three years, it's going to be total, utter chaos. 
there's no way around that to consume that much radiation. Well, that's the, all bioaccumulated. It's going to be boom time for the cancer industry, that's for damn sure. It's two years. Because yeah. uh, we know from the animal yeah, studies, yeah, it takes I mean, five or six yeah. years. All right. Uh, Yoshi, go ahead. I got that. For those of you online, well, just, uh, uh, reload your page. That, that is an indication of what's happening on the Alaskan coast. I mean, that's a major fishery, major yeah. fishing ground, major center for marine mammals, all the people who take those ferry boats, you know, up to the Vancouver Channel, up to Alaska, by, by between the islands and all that. Well, it's lucky you did that before because you got to see a bit of biological uh, archaeology there today, paleontology today, okay? It's all gone. Yeah. There's nothing. Yes. Those the numbers that Dana is talking about. And those are underestimates. Again, whenever we measure yes, water, sir. it's usually oh, yeah. worse than what we estimate. Well, if you remember, one of the first things the Japanese government did, and we reported it to you here, was to raise the so-called safe levels of exposure to dozens of uh, radionuclides. Most of them are artificial, which only come from a, a meltdown. So the public could say, well, I'm still, this, these are safe. Uh, then they did it over here. And this government actually surpassed the outrageous elevation that the Japanese government gave their people. One of the elements in drinking water here was raised 27,000 times higher. I've forgotten which one it was. 27,000. So they don't look, folks, they're not going to hold a news conference and ever be honest. Pre-Fukushima was five becquels a liter. Now it's 7,000 becquels a liter for tritium. So we know what the numbers were pre-Fukushima, and now they got this up to 7,000. So that's exactly what you're saying, Jeff. Yes. But this is, this is to me, unacceptable. And I'm not going to just sit here and take it. And they're definitely going to get blowback for this one until the end of time because I'm not going to sit and take it. I want to take their pensions now and put, build prisons to hide them away. And I'm not going to sit and take it. I'm not going to sit here and be a genocide. Well, folks, uh, that, Dana, I, I yeah. agree. You know, I mean, these scientists, you know, what Joe Lewis said, you can run, but you can't hide. It's going to catch up with them, right. with their kids, with their colleagues. Uh, if they don't wake up, just look in the mirror and pull the trigger when you do that. I mean, because these people are Put it on so, YouTube out of so we can all enjoy it. Going yeah. along with this nonsensical cover up and not telling people the truth. The people deserve to know the truth. If their lives, the lives of their children, of everything they got, their domestic animals, everything around them is on the line. They have every right to know what that threat is. And the threat is right, right there. It, it is like building. It's building up every day. And uh, we see no end in sight. We just see it getting worse. So and, and oh, everyone, you know, the standard thing yeah. for the media is things are getting better. I mean, things are not getting better. Look inside that reactor. Things are not getting better. Look at where you're at. There has been, it, you know, it, things are deteriorating. It's getting worse. There are more and more compounds being generated and coming across by air, by sea. So, Dana, you're right. We cannot, you know, just sit by and hide in a hole. We're going to have to take these guys on and challenge them. Just challenge them that they're a pack of liars. they got to face the facts. That's all. They've got to face the facts themselves. Well, we got this, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jay, uh, Carney? I can't remember his name. Jay Carney. I like that one. Jay Cullen. Yeah. From the University of Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, a sitting professor, a tenured professor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, it's just like, uh, UC Berkeley, Dr. Kai Vetter. None of these people are above, and I'm not saying that they did, so don't sue me. None of these people are above uh the the mechan the mechanisms of uh control and that includes everything from yeah, grant they, well, threats so everything they still have to drink water right yeah. well you'd think so, so you know unless they're having it yeah, flown in from france drink water and that fact is not going to go get away they're not going to get away from that fact and uh if you have a folks yeah bubble. here's another thing um gentlemen uh i would recommend because of the ongoing war to take control of our water, most of which is surface water, that anyone who has the ability, has land, who can drill a well, drill a well if you don't have one. Get your water from a couple hundred feet deep. You're safe that way. Uh, the aquifers aren't destroyed yet. Uh, most of it's surface water. So, uh, And if you have a garden, uh, cover it. For God's sakes, with a greenhouse, put plastic over the top of it. Try to use well water. If you have to go buy it from a neighbor who's got a well, do it. You don't have to water your stuff every single day. 
Uh, you've got to think uh, logically. And, and the bioaccumulation is the single most important fact of this whole process that no one will talk about. All right, uh, Yochi, I've got the periodic table up. Everybody can go to it under yeah. uh, Yochi's name okay. yeah. uh, and, and guess okay. at rent. So what do you want to do? Yeah, you got to, I mean, what what is happening in that reactor? First of all, we see that uh, sort of a grid, right, below the uh, machine there, below the robot, and that is the uh, core plate. That's the bottom of the core, basically the floor of the core. And if anything happens to leak out, it would leak out there, and there's nothing above the core plate except a few uh, black, blackened blocks of metal, and a lot of sort of yellow ooze on 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 that uh, on that screen there. Okay, so what is that all about? Well, first of all, when a meltdown occurs, the rods are sort of like melt and break off and fall down below that into the bottom of the pressure chamber burn through there and go into the drywall. And then uh, if it succeeds in burning through the metal of the drywall and then through the concrete, it's uh, home free. It's, not, it's in, in the earth, okay? Now, what happens is before that happens to prevent the fuel rod from melting down or to slow down that meltdown, the boron control rod, boron is a metal that absorbs uh, neutrons. You know, it'll help block the neutrons so that you don't get this chain reaction between the uranium and plutonium. Oh, in this case, it's uranium uh, yeah. fuel rod. Let me uh, direct our, let me, that. hold on a sec. Uh, for all of you who are listening and want to see what Yochi is talking about, look in the Fukushima updates at the top center column, third story, dead robot reported 10 sieverts an hour in reactor one video. Load that page, and you will see a picture of what he just described with this yellowy, crappy stuff on what looks like a grid, a grate at the bottom of the picture. Okay. Go ahead, Yoshi. Yeah. yeah. And then we see that lump of black metal there, a couple of lumps. What that is, that's melted boron. In other words, it was so hot so fast that the, that the boron rods, as they melted down into puddles of metal, and some of them were left on top of the, on the, on top of this grid, okay? And you see it's burnt to a crisp on the outside, which means that it was so, these lumps were so bombarded by neutrons that the boron just basically were coated with radioactive boron, okay? The, the boron was so bombarded, it became radioactive itself on the surface. And therefore, boron inside those blocks cannot absorb any more neutrons from the, uh, the fuel rods. From the fuel rods. So, yeah. Yeah. So basically, we got a piece of evidence there. The yellow stuff, very questionable because uranium, pure uranium is yellow, but we're not seeing much pure uranium. The stuff is transforming into other decaying materials very rapidly under that kind of uh, situation, intense situation. Probably radioactive sulfur is probably what that is. Uh, you know, it's amazing how under neutron bombardment, Nearly any element could come be overloaded with neutrons and even with uh, protons to become more and more radioactive, mm -hmm. okay? So what we're seeing here is a whole progression toward uh, larger and larger. You know, what's happening, we're growing uh, atoms, we're growing nucleuses of atoms, of elements, okay? They're getting bigger and bigger from the neutron bombardment and uh, also proton bombardment. As neutrons displace protons, uh, protons will bombard. And so we're getting a thousand radioactive compounds. Now, where they're really centered is on what's called the seventh period. It's, you know, the periodic table is sort of one block. It looks like two towers on either end. And then there's seven lines across. Right. And then below that are two separate lines, the lanthanide group and the actinide group, where it's treated separately. At the bottom, are, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can be very, uh, uh, beyond super. Anyway, the seventh group, the seventh line, the bottom line, of the main part of the periodic table is the seventh period, and those are super heavy metals. Many of them are artificial, made in reactors. That's what has been building up. Now, if you look toward the... And these metals are extremely radioactive. They're more radioactive than plutonium, and that would account for the massive Penn Sievert levels we're looking at inside that reactor. Now, on the right side, you'll see these uh, uh, on, the seventh, on that same seventh 
level there, the seventh row. Say, is it, look on the left side of the you? page. You'll see one, two, three, four, right, five, six, right, seven. On the right side. Yeah. Okay. You, yeah, you, but they're uh, numbered. Seven, seven down. Seven yeah. down. The horizontal bar. Seven yeah, yeah, down. yeah. On the far right side of that, you'll see the very U, 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 U. That means unnamed. There's, there's the ungroup, okay? Uh huh. And very ironically, the first of the unnamed, and these are super radioactive, uh, uh, compounds, heavy metals, are, were, uh, uh, basically studied by Riken, the Japan Nuclear Institute. And the proposed names for those <laughs> compounds are japonium, Rikenium, and Nishidium, after, uh, Nishida, a top Japanese. So there's kind of an irony that this is a lot of Japanese research was concentrated in this super radioactive group. And now we're seeing these kind of compounds just like emitting out of reactor one, which is again, one of the smaller reactors there. It's not reactor three. So massive amounts of super. And then this will continue down through the actinite group. Uh, uh, uranium and plutonium are being superseded by, uh, uh, you know, you see plutonium down there. By americium, californium, berkium, uh, einsteinium, uh, uh, livermorium, and so on. We're creating massively radioactive compounds. Some of them with long half lives some of them with short half lives So basically, the interior of that nuclear reactor, number one, is so radioactive from these new compounds that were created, wow. we do not need, you know, the plutonium, uranium, corium to explain anymore <laughs> what's going on. The wow. real problem here now is that the steel itself, the iron, manganese, cobalt, all these things that are inside the metal, besides iron you know, mm-hmm. of the pressure chamber, mm-hmm. that's all also evolving. So instead of a steel crystalline alloy, which gives that chamber so much strength, what we're getting is an amalgam of heavy metal, okay? Heavy metal, which are getting larger and larger and breaking apart the, uh, the pressure chamber. Do you see what I'm saying? As I do. I do. The eye gets bigger and bigger and yeah. bigger. The internal pressure within that material is no longer bonded as an alloy. It's just like a brickwork of things that are growing. If, if you had a brick wall and some of those bricks were growing, eventually that wall will crumble. In other words, what I'm saying is the nuclear chemistry is showing that all those reactors are basically going to self-disrupt. You know, the, the structurally... They're going to come apart internally from this uh, whole process of neutron bombardment and the growth of these super heavy metals. So basically, uh, we're not going to see a fragment or something. We're going to see the, basically the whole structure is coming apart and everything inside is going to be released. Okay, That's inevitable at this point. That's just the nuclear chemistry of the thing. What happened to the corium? They said, well, you know, the, the, you know, the, the Japanese uh, scientists, their uh, nuclear scientists, made some terrible statements. They said, well, we saw steam. The robot saw steam inside the chamber. Therefore, we assume the corium is still inside the chamber. No, if the corium had been there in that amount, there be you wouldn't be able to see very much at all. Okay? The steam would be, be like fog. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the water has escaped. Okay? It's just a residual amount or just a little bit of very light cloudy, you know, cloudiness, not dense fog, you know, uh, that's left in there, which means where went the water, went the corium. The corium has got to be, if, if anything is evidence of the corium, has escaped containment from the drywall, you know, containment structure, so, and it's probably in the ground already. So basically, because the corium escaped, does not mean that these reactors are by any means safe. It's left behind this unheard of, uh, you know, combination of radioactive metals that we have no idea. You know, these are things that are made in tiny little you know, milligram quantities in vast nuclear reactions at research universities. This stuff is just free breeding out there, you know? It's just generating itself, and nothing stays the same. It is, you know, some of it's decaying, others are building up. We do not understand this process. They don't teach this stuff. You know, we, I had to learn some nuclear chemistry when I went to organic chemistry school. Uh, but, but there was no, there's no theory. I mean, there's, there's nothing to explain this stuff. There's no experience with this stuff. We're talking about tiny little quantities that have been made before. We have, you know, vast amounts, unheard of, uh, you know, 
immense power far beyond the capacity of steel or concrete to hold. So the report from the robot, extremely alarming, okay, of what's going on. You, you know, can, you, again, you, you can see the pictures. Far worse than we could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. Far worse. You can see the pictures. Yeah, far worse than we can imagine. Look at the top in the Fukushima section. Dead robot reports 10 Seaberts an hour in Reactor 1 video. Look there. There's video and there are still pictures. And you can see what uh, Yochi is talking about. You can pull up the periodic table and you can look right there. Line number 7 on the left. It goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Simply walk across to the right side of it and you'll say, you'll come to the end. UUS, UUO. These are unnamed, extremely dense radioactive elements. So they don't even have names for them. Uh, Shimatsuvium. There's one. How's that? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's the one that's going to end the world if they ever come to that yeah. one. That's off the chart. That's still off the chart. That is. Now, that this is, is really uh, alarming because these, these are uncontrolled nuclear chemical processes of which no scientists have any has anything but maybe just like grade level, you know, grade school level knowledge of what's going on. No one really knows how it's going to end. I'm making this prediction. It's just you make that an uh, analogy with a brick wall. Some of the bricks are getting bigger, yeah, and uh, the wall's not going to hold. And when those reactors really shatter, watch out. This is a, you know, I've all said this is a Pandora's box, and this is the heart of the Pandora's box that is Fukushima. A lot right. of monsters have come out before, but the biggest monsters we have yet to see, and unfortunately, I think, yeah, you know, the stuff is leaking. I mean, if they're they're leaking from containment, so why would the Canadian government? Because Canada, you know, has got a lot of uranium deposits. They have a lot of the can-do nuclear reactors and all that. So they don't really bunch those with a lot of radio, you know, artificial radionucleotides. When they mention artificial radionucleotides, they're talking about these other things that are more powerful than plutonium. Okay. And it's already reaching Canada. Obviously. It's there. I. Uh, Dana, yeah. are you now? You're you're up at the uh, at the tip of of Canada, where it uh, where it joins Alaska. Did I hear you right? No, I'm at the top of the Queen Charlotte's. Ah, and that's an archipelago off the coastline. It's yeah, 350 yeah, yeah. kilometers long, and we're at the very northwest corner of Canada. So sometimes I'm not very clear. No, no, <laughs> that's good. I got it. Okay, like so uh, I don't know how many pictures you've taken, how much video you have. But when are you going to start heading back down? Now, you were, you were threatened uh, the last time we talked. You were describing that or the time before. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was, they, they physically put their hands on me. And uh, I, I, there's been a change of plans because of the urgency, and I'm probably not going to make it back. I don't even want to think about it. The end, end of June, I guess, before I'll probably even get close to getting back. And the urgency is real, and, you know, to see 7 million becquels in a cubic meter of water as a standard of tritium in Canada is... Now, this is, uh, folks, this is drinking household water. This is tap water he's talking about. This is your tap water. So if you, when you get a bat, folks, or you got a hot tub, or you're getting a long shower, you're looking at 10,000 becquels of cesium-137. That's man-made, 100%. You're looking at 6,000 becquels of iodine-131. That's man-made. Good that's God. Good. That's, that's normal. You're looking at 5,000 becquels at the same time of strontium-90 and 7 million becquels of tritium. And all either one of these atoms, and, and, and each one of these are atoms. Think of a becquel as an atom, folks. Each one of these can give you cancer in two, three, four, five, six. Can go right years, through your skin. Decades. If you're consuming this constantly all the time, I'm going to recommend to people don't get a shower every day. Don't, you know, start no. cutting back on stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, because you, you absorb so much water, and we really truly are. If we're going to extend our life, that's going to be one of the few ways you can help do it is slow down the intake of this. And, like, you can sponge down. <laughs> and so it's ludicrous that we're even talking about that. But it's ludicrous that we have these numbers. In our drinking water, well, they've, they've in our shower shot. water, in our baby water, and we can't get away from it. That's why they've done it to this. But this is not the real number, of course, like Jeff said earlier. And I just want to implore upon people to consider what I'm saying and look it up to yourself at, uh, you know, look it up yourself at Canada's drinking water standards. 
guidelines for Canadian drinking water quality. Well, our, our standards are, are every bit as insane. Uh, please yeah. understand, uh, in you. fact, tomorrow night I'm going to have Dr. Michael Kuriak on, uh, a Russian scientist who with hundreds right. of technicians uh, after Chernobyl was able to come up with this product, uh, the four best algaes, which can help uh denature and reverse bioaccumulation. It can help prevent uh, the actual damages from uh, radioactivity the, the, it, by boosting your immune system to incredible heights. Uh, you've got to understand, look at the top of my homepage, look at the second banner, Jeff Rents, urges you to take action now to start protecting you and your loved ones from the bioaccumulative effects of Fukushima radiation. This is not a joke. Uh, listen to Dr. Kiriak tomorrow night. This man saved God knows how many lives after Chernobyl. This product is not a joke. It's the only thing I know of that has been proven to have positive effects on people who have been exposed. All right? You should be, it's not expensive. You should be taking this every day, not strictly for the radiation, although that's plenty for me. That's why I take it. But you're going to get nutritional and Total support for your immune system like nothing else I've been able to take. I, th I do consider this the reason I am still functioning as well as I am. And I'm functioning pretty damn well. However, my inner core strength is not what it was. I can tell you that. Now, maybe over time it will come back. It's been four years. But I was heavily dosed with, I think it was 131, for about 10 days. I could taste it. I could feel it. I could. T it, was, it was right in the back of my throat, in my sinuses. And thank God I was on to this early, or I, I don't know what would happen. I just don't know. That's why I put this up there. I want you to look at it and consider. Listen to Dr. Kiriak tomorrow night, and we'll follow up uh, further with that. Uh, Dana, anything uh, you want to add to what you've... Thank you so much for the... That was just an extremely eloquent display of what a government does when it doesn't care about its people. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. I say good night and hugs for everybody. And All right, you go rest. Thank you for giving me the opportunity, everybody. And just remember, you know, what Yoshi telling you and has told you, <laughs> Jeff is doing, is you're doing it for well, the right Whenever you need a break, Dana, we're reason. down by the tropics. Dana, if okay, you ever need bro. a break, need the R&R, yeah. we're down here. I'll be there you know, a couple of years time, I'm pretty sure. That <laughs> we're around. And that stuff that Jeff talks about comes from this area. You know, it's uh, uh, toward the tropics, it's grown. So it's uh, uh last place to go, really, after Fukushima, you know, so. Thank you. Right. Okay, Dana. Okay, my friend. Good you night, take care. Everyone. Take All right. care. You too, yeah. Uh, Yochi, uh, this, uh, this information we give out, unfortunately, is designed for everyone, but not everyone is interested, not everyone is listening. All we can do is what we can do, and we have to rely on you people out yeah. there to pass the word along. Uh, again, listen to Dr. Kiriak tomorrow night. This man knows what he's doing. Uh, Chernobyl, uh, he praised, hailed, uh, honored for the accomplishments in, in creating this, this com combination of four algaes. Uh, they are so strong and it, it's, it's essential. It's the only thing I know. And, uh, curcumin is another one. Now, Yoshi has his own regimen of, of herbs that have saved oh, his yeah, life. Yeah. Nearly every day. Nearly yeah, every day. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have to. You have to. Um, okay. Now, uh, anything? Uh, we got just a minute or so left, Yochi. Anything to add? Well, I think we're going to have to try to keep these uh, scientists and uh, uh, over in Japan, the United States, honest. They're a bunch of dishonest brokers. The governments are not being honest at all. Uh, they're no. continuing to push more nuclear power plants. The people are innovated. The Japanese people are worn out, broken. Uh, so we're just going to have to push on. I know how Tina feels at times. You know, it's totally depressing that more people aren't standing up for their right to know and, and are no, trying to not. come up with strategies, trying to help us with this, you know, common problem faced by all humanity. How many people are rowing in the boat? Are rowing the boat? And how many people just sitting there on the edge is going for a dip, you know, enjoying life, you know? Remember is, you all know? animals, all vegetables, all life forms are affected. 
Remember the mutated well, insects. Yeah. Remember the sunflowers. Remember well, the tomatoes. Huh? Well, you remember the old story, Noah's Ark. Yeah. Are you on the boat? Well, Are you having a good time out there, you know, on the beach, enjoying remember. your life? Again, the Russians are building their own... The storm is there, the waters are rising, the waters are deadly. Yeah. And uh, some of us are working at it. Too many people are going to be left in those waters. The Russians are building their own seed vault in uh, far north of Siberia now. They know. They know. Yoshi, uh, yeah, you, you take care. I'll talk to you next week. Okay, uh, that's our program tonight. Thanks for being here. A uh, really important one tomorrow night as well. Uh, do look up, uh, look at the banner, the second banner at the top of my page. There's, I put three banners on the page. That's how important this is for everyone to take every day for a variety of reasons. But most of all, because this is Chernobyl proven. All right? See you tomorrow night. Take care.